Hello, this is Mario Fific. This work is done in collaboration with Cheng Tai Yang and Daniel Little. One of the most important questions in perception is how do we perceive objects such as faces and how do we represent these objects in our neural system. There has been a significant amount of evidence from neurophysiological studies that complex object representations are built up you know, from very basic features and the different regions in uh, our brain are engaged at a different level of processing of these features, making them more complex starting from their very basic. In the domain of perception, researchers are actually supporting two types of hypotheses. One is analytic hypothesis and another is holistic. Analytic assumes that all perceptual processes are conducted on individual features, while holistic hypotheses assume that all features are combined together and then perception operates on the whole objects. These poses two challenges the first challenge is the answer to the question, how do we integrate both holistic and analytic encoding within the same framework? That is how perception switches from one mode to another. And that how this is related to the hierarchical feature, facial representations. The second question is, how do we integrate these stages in perceptual process with a higher level cognitive processes such as memory and decision. To provide answers to these questions, we defined modular serial parallel network or MSPN here in short. This network is a synthesis between several very successful approaches in the perception and cognitive domains. They're listed here. And uh, as such, they can provide information about very important four stages in facial perception. That will be about representational stage, about the decisional stage, about the logical rules implementation in the classification and categorization of perceptual stimuli. And D, it provides information about the modular stochastic accrual of information that is a sequential sampling evidence that can account for both choice probabilities and response time measures. Here is the scheme of modular serial parallel network in which we see that objects are decomposed initially into sets of independent features represented here as a stimulus dimensions here and each of these um, distribution represents activation of one stored memory representation. To be able to classify or recognize or do some perceptual actions, one has to learn how to divide these regions into the response uh, areas, which is uh, done by implementing the rules. The rules here are orthogonal line that separates response regions. Uh, for example, this is a feature that belongs to A or belongs to B. And the next step is the evidence accumulation, that is the system that analyzes this information from the, each individual dimensions using sequential sampling model here, that it is fed, fed to a decisional stage. Now, uh, out of the multiple of these analyzers, they are going into this, what we see is a modular network that can switch between serial system, if this is a serial system, that this information has been fed into one line, and the system has to analyze all this evidence as, you know, in a sequence, one after another. However, if we feed this system into a parallel network in the parallel module, then each of these um, inputs or uh, evidence is fed into the uh, parallel system, so in each of them are uh, analyzed simultaneously. So as in both cases, uh, a single target feature that is uh, has a property uh, recognized by the evidence accumulator can actually stop the process and lead you know, to classification or decision here. If uh, none of these has been found, the system has to do process all of them. So that distinguish between termination and exhaustiveness. So that is the 
modular, modular cellular parallel or MSP and network in short. Here is one example and how the MSP and networks works, you know, with a classification problem in which we have stimulus represented two dimensional phase space with the mouth separation and eye separation. So we created the 16 phases. And let's see that, assume that the processing, the task is to learn to categorize these phases. See, we'll call them categories A that have um, certain uh, properties of individual features larger than a certain value here indicated by the green lines and two independent dimensions. So this is like a conjoint decision and one has to analyze uh, to learn to detect features uh, from the region on each dimensions uh, going to the right on the first property and going to the left on the second property and the second attribute. So that information will be sequentially sampled and uh, will be uh, fed into the modular gate. Now, depending on the uh, likelihood, you know, the system can either switch between parallel or serial system. In this one, it is, mod it is gated toward the parallel processing, but on a trial to trial basis, it can switch between serial and parallel. So if it goes to parallel processing, then both features or evidence accumulated would be uh, processed using, uh, in this case, something like random walk or the fusion process would be processed, you know, at the simultaneously at the same time. And uh, uh, in the same case, in the parallel system, you know, interactivity that is dependence between feature uh, accumulators is allowed by, uh, thus by uh, summing up, you know, the two uh, sources information here indicated by the third um, uh, sum of the random walk process in this uh, uh, in this uh, um, um, case, which can lead you know, to the decision. So uh, this is how, in the short, how um, um, a modular serial parallel network works. In a serial case, uh, we see that two uh, accumulation processes are separated, and they're um, also a subject, you know, to uh, different types of testing, you know, during the process. The main idea has been actually laid out by a work of. Uh, um, uh, myself, uh, Nasovsky, and Dale Little um, in a recent paper. And these are the schematics of two uh, mental architectures, that is, uh, systems with a different processing order for the serial and parallel interactive model. So we conducted a study to analyze these properties. So in the study, we formed two race groups of participants, Asian Caucasians. In the first part of the study, we did some adjustments of the saliency of uh, perceptual features, just making them equal by um, uh, using appropriate uh, methods. But the second part uh, was very important, in which we run two types of two groups of subjects, you know, coming from different uh, regions, uh, Taiwan and uh, Americans, and we showed them, you know, two different sets of faces, you know, just um, um, Asian face or American face, and this, in short, these kinds of studies can uh, 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 be usually designed to test what is known as the other race effect. But in general, we'll see you know, how this will be applied to analyze the details of the properties of underlying perceptual networks. As in the previous example, we see that uh, the stimulus configuration is a two-dimensional space running, um, varying across two attributes, which is mouth separation and eye separations. I don't want to go into details much about it. Uh, the thing is that the uh, the reference phase has been learned, and one has to learn to categorize these faces. The idea is to to learn to categorize uh, faces of this group here uh, using probably conjoint rules. That is. Uh, both features have to exceed certain uh, value to, of the reference phase. So if the uh, feature analyzed on the mouth separation is larger than this kind of red line here, that probably goes to the region here, but that's not sufficient for us to make this decision. We also have to check you know, the other feature, which is eye separation, that is larger than that value. And we have learned that we can actually categorize these faces by combining, conjoining uh, rules you know, are, are imposed over these two features to make this classification. The other features, the other objects or facial objects or faces here could be categorized only using a single feature. In general, we designed a computational model for the MSPN 
um, a network using 19 param parameters. We fitted the individual subjects data simultaneously fit correct and incorrect response times distributions. We use multinomial likelihood function and BAC scores to uh, penalize for the model complexity. These uh, first um, uh, four groups of models are actually special cases of MSPN and uh, serial parallel independent parallel interactive and coactive models are usually been tested in isolation and has been defined previously as a separate individual uh, uh, modules. Uh, in this case, we can actually create this uh, first four models by as a special cases by setting up the parameter values of MSPN model to certain values, they actually can generate, you know, this individual model. So these are simpler nested models. This is a more complex saturated models is just the statistical models that doesn't have make any processing assumptions. And uh, um, it is used as a yardstick to see how well, you know, the overall, you know, the fit of the model is. This four by four panels here indicate the individual subjects data fit for one, uh, one subject for MSPN model. In one case, you know, just shown here for appreciation of the quality of the model fits and the goodness of the fits. As we can see, the model predictions are actually capturing very well the uh, observed uh, quantile distributions for both correct on the right hand side and incorrect of the left-hand side uh, responses. Across all 16 faces presented here in the study. For a moment, you know, we can stop here and appreciate um, the goodness and the quality of the fits, you know, of the, of the MSPN model to the data. So here we can see the overall uh, results of the model fitting results for each individual subject for different phases belonging to different uh, groups. We're not going to try here to compare uh, different groups. We just look at the overall scores for um, different models. We can see the it is being dominated by the MSPN uh, model. BAC scores are actually the lowest when compared to all simpler models that are special cases of the MSPN and usually tested in the literature. Uh, what is interesting to see also is that um, this model, MSPN score BIC, is lower than the saturated model, which doesn't make any assumptions. It's usually used as a yardstick. It's a statistical model, just use the comparisons, which speaks, you know, actually of the um, validity of uh, these assumptions uh, to uh, some extent. Um, and then uh, finally, a uh, very interesting thing is that the log likelihoods of the MSPN model in some cases are actually lower than the log likelihoods of the saturated model. So these scores are not penalized for the model complexity. So one can ask a question, how is that possible? Well, um, after checking, you know, it was not an error. You know, uh, there are some properties of the uh, MSPN models that actually can maybe pick up additional variance, you know, during model fitting than even saturated model can, which um, uh, maybe we can, you know, open for the discussion. But it could be associated with the uh, uh, variability of uh, drift diffusion rate, which is usually be taken as a consideration in the uh, uh, wider literature. So uh, MSPN model as a mixture model actually can maybe probably capture some of this um, um, drift diffusion variance probably better than the saturated model. Uh, so um, this is uh, actually a very good result. The best fitting model parameters of the MSPN model can be further analyzed to indicate some modular properties and some of the properties of the models that are relevant to facial perception. So um, the analysis of how likely is that the uh, module has been gated between zero and parallelity indicates that most of the subjects that were engaged in a parallel process when compared to zero processing. But this finding itself is very interesting because we can see that subjects were engaged in sequential analysis, feature by feature analysis, in the 36% of a, uh, times of a trials. Uh, when we analyze the parallel domain, parallel module only, further we can uh, investigate whether there is a facilitation or dependency happened between processes. As we can see, in most of the cases, the processes were treated as independent. The features from uh, two uh, properties were analyzed independently in 80% of cases. For um, 20, around 20% 20 of cases, these were, there were interactions involved between feature detectors. That means there is a curve. Uh, dependence in the feature detection uh, that could be either accounted by uh, excitation or inhibition. 
So altogether, we can see how this analysis of the parameter values could be used to further elucidate uh, the properties of holistic versus analytic analysis in terms of the analyzing the parameter properties. We can link this to Townsend's and Wenger's axioms of uh, information processing properties accounts that could be used to differentiate, elucidate the properties of analytic and holistic encoding. So more about this information you can find in these papers. At this point, I would like to thank you for attending this presentation. Please uh, stop here for a second and uh, go briefly over our conclusions. Thank you so much.